I didn't expect it to go this far, not at first. But after the seeds of doubt were planted, they grew into something far more sinister, more twisted than I could have imagined when I first suspected something was off with Jessica, it wasn't the lipstick stains on the collar or the lingering scent of cologne on her clothes. No, it was the subtle things, the late-night texts she quickly dismissed, the way she avoided eye contact when I asked simple questions, the sudden, unexplained business trips. My heart told me something was wrong, but my mind refused to believe it. That was until I found the receipts, the ones she thought were safely hidden away in the bottom of her purse. A hotel stay, dinners at places we'd never been to together, and gifts that I'd never received, the decision to set up the hidden cameras was impulsive, driven by a dark curiosity that gnawed at my insides. I told myself it was just to confirm my suspicions, to catch her in the act so I could confront her with the cold, hard truth. But even as I installed the cameras in every corner of the house, disguising them as smoke detectors, picture frames, and even light bulbs, I knew deep down that I wasn't doing this for closure. I was doing it for something far more disturbing that I waited, and it didn't take long for the cameras to capture what I feared most. Jessica brought him to our home, the one place that was supposed to be ours, and she betrayed me under our roof. Night after night, I watched them on my screen their stolen moments of passion, their whispers of sweet nothings that echoed through the speakers like venom in my ears. Each time I watched, the anger inside me grew, consuming every rational thought until there was nothing left but a need to hurt her the way she had hurt me but confronting her wasn't enough. I needed everyone to know what she had done, her parents, her friends, her colleagues. I needed them to see the truth, to see the real Jessica. So I took the footage and began to edit it. At first it was just about putting the clips together, showing the undeniable evidence of her infidelity. But as I sat in front of the screen, replaying the scenes over and over, an idea took hold of me. I could make this into something more, something that would haunt her forever that I spent hours crafting the film, adding dark, distorted music, and splicing in shots of our happy times together, our wedding, holidays, the moments where we laughed, loved, and lived. I manipulated the footage to make it seem like the shadows were alive, creeping closer to the lovers as they writhed in the bed we once shared. The more I worked on it, the more detached I became, as if I were directing a horror movie rather than documenting the collapse of my marriage. When I finished, the film was more than just evidence, it was a work of art, a twisted masterpiece that captured the essence of betrayal. I sent it out, not just to her family and friends, but to our mutual acquaintances, our neighbors, her workplace. I wanted to make sure there was no escape for her, no way to explain it away but as I hit send on that final email, I couldn't shake the feeling that the darkness I had poured into the film had seeped into me as well. The thrill of revenge had become something more, a hunger, a need for control, for power over the one who had wronged me. And as I sat alone in the silence of our empty home, I realized that this was just the beginning, the first reply came in almost immediately, a shocked and horrified response from one of Jessica's closest friends. What the hell is this, she wrote, her message filled with disbelief. As more replies trickled in, the tone shifted from shock to revulsion. I could feel the weight of their judgment, their disgust, as they processed what I had done. But instead of regret, I felt a twisted sense of satisfaction. They knew now. They all knew that I watched as Jessica's world began to crumble. She received the video the same time as everyone else, her phone lighting up with messages and missed calls. I could hear her sobbing through the walls of our house as she tried to call her parents, her voice trembling with desperation. But no one answered her calls. I had made sure they watched the film first. They knew exactly who she was now, and they wanted nothing to do with her. Jessica's attempts to reach out to her friends were met with cold silence. No one wanted to be associated with her, the woman who had been exposed in such a brutal and humiliating way. The whispers started almost immediately, circulating through our small town like a poisonous wind. I watched her crumble under the pressure, her once confident demeanor shattered into a thousand pieces, but the horror of what I had done didn't stop their point one night, as I was reviewing the footage from the cameras, I noticed something strange. In one of the clips, there was a shadow that shouldn't have been there, something darker, 
more solid than the usual play of light in the room. It hovered near the bed where Jessica and her lover had been, moving with a slow, deliberate purpose. I rewound the tape, thinking it was a trick of the light, but the shadow remained, unmistakable and terrifying. At first, I dismissed it as a glitch, a byproduct of my overactive imagination and the hours spent obsessing over the footage. But then I saw it again, in another clip, moving closer to the bed, closer to Jessica. The shadow seemed almost, alive. As the days passed, the strange occurrences multiplied. Jessica started complaining about hearing things in the house, whispers in the middle of the night, creaking footsteps that seemed to follow her from room to room. She said she felt like someone was watching her, even when she was alone. Her paranoia grew with each passing day, her once vibrant eyes now dull and clouded with fear. She stopped sleeping, her night spent pacing the house or curled up on the couch, clutching a kitchen knife as if it could protect her from whatever was haunting her but I didn't tell her what I had seen on the tapes. I didn't tell her about the shadow that seemed to be stalking her, the darkness that seemed to be feeding off her fear. Instead, I watched, fascinated and horrified, as the line between reality and madness blurred before my eyes, the house grew colder, the air heavy with a malevolent presence that I couldn't explain. The shadows grew darker, more defined, creeping along the walls and floors like living things. And the whispers, those damn whispers, they started filling the silence, hissing in the corners of the rooms, growing louder and more insistent each night. I began to hear them too, and they were no longer confined to the house. They followed me wherever I went, a constant, sinister murmur that twisted my thoughts and filled my mind with dread. Jessica's lover, sensing her unraveling state, tried to distance himself. But the house had other plans. One night, when he attempted to leave, the front door wouldn't budge. He struggled with it, pulling and yanking until his hands were raw, but the door remained shut as if it were welded to the frame. The whispers grew louder, surrounding him, driving him into a frenzy. He screamed at Jessica to help him, but she was too far gone, lost in her own terror. As he turned to flee through the back door, I saw it, the shadow, no longer just a dark spot on the footage, but a tangible, oppressive force. It moved with terrifying speed, engulfing him in a suffocating blackness. The cameras captured it all, every horrifying second, as the shadow seemed to swallow him whole, his screams cut short as he was dragged into the darkness and then, as suddenly as it had appeared, the shadow was gone. The house fell silent, the door swung open effortlessly, and Jessica was left alone in the middle of the room, her eyes wide with terror, her mind shattered beyond repair, that night, as I reviewed the footage, I realized something that sent a chill down my spine, something that made my blood run cold. The shadow wasn't just haunting Jessica. It was feeding on her despair, growing stronger with each passing day. And now, it was coming for me, after that night, everything changed. The house no longer felt like a home, it felt like a trap, a living entity with its own malevolent will. The air was thick with tension, every creak of the floorboards, every whisper of the wind through the cracks, felt deliberate, like the house was breathing, watching, waiting, Jessica barely left her bedroom anymore. She was a shell of the woman I once knew, her beauty drained by fear and exhaustion. Her eyes were hollow, her skin pale and lifeless. She muttered to herself constantly, as if trying to drown out the whispers that filled her head, but nothing could block them out. They were everywhere. Coiling around her mind, seeping into her thoughts, and pulling her deeper into madness that I tried to ignore it at first, tried to convince myself that it was all just a product of her guilt, her paranoia. But the truth was impossible to deny. I could feel it too. The darkness wasn't just stalking Jessica anymore, it had turned its gaze on me. The cameras I had once relied on to expose her betrayal now seemed like tools of the devil, capturing glimpses of something that shouldn't exist, something that defied all logic and reason that I began seeing the shadow more frequently. It no longer hid in the corners or the edges of the frame. It moved with purpose now, lingering just out of reach, taunting me with its presence. I could feel it even when I wasn't watching the footage, a cold, oppressive weight that settled on my chest, making it hard to breathe. The once comforting silence of the house had become a nightmare, 
filled with the soft, insidious whispers that twisted and distorted my thoughts until I could barely recognize them as my own point one evening, as I sat alone in the living room, the whispers grew louder, more insistent. They seemed to be speaking directly to me now, urging me to do something I couldn't quite understand. My heart pounded in my chest as I strained to make out the words, the hissing voices overlapping and intertwining in a maddening symphony of dread. I pressed my hands to my ears, trying to block them out, but the whispers were inside me, crawling through my mind like a parasite, then, just as suddenly as they had started, the whispers stopped. The silence that followed was deafening, suffocating. I looked around the room, my eyes darting from shadow to shadow, expecting the darkness to surge forward and swallow me whole at any moment. But nothing happened that I thought I had finally found some peace, but that was just the calm before the storm, the next day, I noticed something strange on the footage. The cameras had captured me, standing in Jessica's room in the middle of the night. My face was blank, my eyes glassy, as I stood at the foot of the bed, watching her sleep. I had no memory of it, no recollection of ever being in her room at that hour. Yet there I was, a ghostly figure, shrouded in shadow. As I continued to watch, the scene grew more disturbing. My hand reached out, slowly, almost tenderly, towards Jessica's face. The shadows in the room seemed to ripple in response, as if they were alive, drawn to the connection between us. I watched in horror as my fingers brushed against her cheek, leaving a smear of darkness in their wake. Jessica stirred in her sleep, a whimper escaping her lips, but she didn't wake up. I withdrew my hand and left the room, my movement stiff and unnatural, like a puppet on strings that I couldn't believe what I was seeing. How could I have done this without knowing? Was I sleepwalking, or was something more sinister at play? The fear that had been gnawing at the edges of my mind erupted into full-blown panic. What if I wasn't in control anymore? What if the shadow had taken over, using me as its vessel, I tried to stay awake that night, afraid of what I might do if I fell asleep. But the exhaustion was overwhelming, and despite my best efforts, I eventually succumbed to the heavy pull of sleep. My dreams were a twisted nightmare, a swirling vortex of shadows, whispers, and flickering images of Jessica's terrified face. I woke up drenched in sweat, my heart racing, only to find myself standing at the foot of her bed once more, my hand hovering above her as she slept, this time, I screamed. I recoiled in horror, stumbling backwards and crashing into the dresser. Jessica jolted awake, her eyes wide with fear as she scrambled to the corner of the bed, clutching the sheets to her chest, what the hell are you doing? She cried, her voice trembling, I, I don't know, I stammered, backing away towards the door. I wasn't, I didn't mean to, but how could I explain this? How could I tell her that something was controlling me, that I wasn't even sure if I was myself anymore? I fled from the room, leaving Jessica in a state of panic and confusion, the weight of my own fear pressing down on me like a vice, the whispers returned that night, louder and more vicious than ever. They clawed at my sanity, tearing away the last shreds of rationality I had left. The shadow was everywhere now, lurking just out of sight, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. And I knew, deep down, that it wouldn't be long before it succeeded, before I was completely consumed by the darkness that had taken root in my soul, days blurred into nights, and nights into a hellish, waking nightmare. I couldn't tell where the house ended and I began. My reflection in the mirror looked like a stranger, a gaunt, hollow-eyed figure with shadows clinging to every inch of his skin. I barely recognized the person staring back at me, his face twisted with fear and confusion. Sleep was no longer an option, every time I closed my eyes, I feared I'd wake up somewhere I didn't belong, like at the foot of Jessica's bed, or worse, Jessica had stopped talking to me entirely. She moved around the house like a ghost, her once vibrant spirit crushed under the weight of whatever was happening to us. I could hear her crying at night, her sobs echoing through the walls, but I couldn't bring myself to comfort her. What could I say? That the husband who should have protected her was the very thing she needed protection from, I became obsessed with the footage, rewinding and replaying every clip, searching for answers, for any clue that might explain what was happening. But the more I watched, the more the lines between reality and madness blurred. 
The shadow was always there, lurking in the background, sometimes just a flicker, sometimes a full, dark mass. And it was always accompanied by those whispers, those damn whispers that never stopped, not even for a moment, one night, as I sat in front of the screen, I noticed something I hadn't seen before. The shadow wasn't just following Jessica or me, it was attached to us. It clung to us like a parasite, feeding off our fear, growing stronger with every terrified breath we took. And I realized, with a jolt of terror, that it wasn't just following us, it was inside us, the thought drove me to the brink. I began tearing the house apart, searching for the cameras I had installed so meticulously. If I could just destroy them, maybe I could break free from whatever curse I had unleashed. But as I ripped them from the walls, one by one, the shadows seemed to grow more agitated. The whispers turned into screams, filling my head with a cacophony of voices, each one more terrifying than the last that I smashed the cameras, stomped on them, threw them into the fireplace, but nothing helped. The house seemed to come alive, mocking my efforts, the shadows twisting and writhing as if they were laughing at me. The whispers grew louder, more insistent, until they drowned out every rational thought and then, the walls started bleeding that IT was subtle at first, a dark, viscous liquid seeping from the corners of the room, pooling on the floor. But as the minutes passed, the trickle turned into a torrent, the walls weeping black blood that coated everything in its path. I stood there, frozen in horror, as the house I once called home became a living, breathing nightmare that I ran to Jessica's room, desperate to escape, to find some semblance of sanity in this madness. But when I burst through the door, the sight that greeted me stopped me cold, Jessica was standing in the middle of the room, her back to me. She was staring at the wall, motionless, as the black blood oozed down around her, soaking into the carpet, staining her clothes. The shadows clung to her like a shroud, swirling around her like living, breathing entities. And when she finally turned to face me, her eyes were no longer her own, they were black, deep pools of darkness that reflected nothing but void. The whispers poured from her lips, an endless stream of incomprehensible words that made my skin crawl. Her face was expressionless, her movements slow and deliberate, as if she were a marionette being controlled by unseen hands, Jessica, I whispered, my voice trembling with fear, but she didn't respond. She just stood there, her eyes boring into me, her mouth moving in a silent chant that echoed in my mind. I wanted to run, to flee from the horror before me, but my feet wouldn't move. I was rooted to the spot, trapped by the same darkness that had consumed her, the shadows began to close in, the room growing colder, the air thicker. I could feel them wrapping around me, squeezing the breath from my lungs, pulling me deeper into the abyss. The whispers became screams, deafening, maddening, as they tore at the last shreds of my sanity and then, everything went black, when I woke up, I was lying on the floor of the living room, the cold, hard surface pressing against my cheek. The house was eerily quiet, the shadows no longer swirling, the whispers gone. I blinked, disoriented, trying to piece together what had happened. But the memories were fragmented, like shards of a broken mirror, each one reflecting a different, terrifying image that I struggled to my feet, my body aching, my mind still foggy. The walls were no longer bleeding, the house no longer felt alive. It was as if everything that had happened was just a horrible, vivid dream. But the terror clung to me, a heavy weight that pressed down on my chest, making it hard to breathe that I stumbled to Jessica's room, my heart pounding in my chest. The door was ajar, the room inside dark and silent. I pushed it open slowly, half expecting to see her standing there, waiting for me with those soulless, black eyes, but the room was empty. Jessica was gone, the only sign that she had ever been there was a single, bloody handprint smeared across the wall, the same wall she had been staring at when I found her. My stomach churned, bile rising in my throat as I realized that the handprint wasn't hers that IT was mine, the bloody handprint on the wall stared back at me, accusing and undeniable. My mind raced, trying to make sense of what I was seeing, but the pieces just wouldn't fit. How could it be mine? I hadn't touched that wall, hadn't even been near it. Yet there it was, my handprint, smeared in blood that still glistened wetly in the dim light that I stumbled back, nearly tripping over my own feet, the world tilting around me. 
The shadows in the room seemed to shift, closing in, their edges blurring as if they were part of the darkness itself. The whispers were gone, but their absence only made the silence more oppressive, more suffocating, where was Jessica? I needed to find her, needed to make sure she was okay. But deep down, I knew, she wasn't. I could feel it in the pit of my stomach, a cold, gnawing certainty that she was lost to me, lost to whatever malevolent force had taken hold of our lives that I moved through the house like a man in a trance, the blood-streaked walls closing in around me. Every door I opened, every corner I turned, I expected to find her, or what was left of her. But the house remained eerily empty, the shadows mocking me, twisting and writhing just out of sight, finally, I found myself back in the living room, the room where it had all begun. The room where I had watched the footage, where I had edited the horrific film that had set everything in motion. The monitors were still there, the screens dark and silent. But I could feel their presence, looming over me like silent sentinels, witnesses to my descent into madness that I sank to my knees, the weight of it all pressing down on me until I thought I might be crushed under it. What had I done? I had wanted revenge, wanted to make Jessica pay for her betrayal, but this, this was something else entirely. This was beyond anything I had ever imagined. As I knelt there, I felt a presence behind me, cold, oppressive, like a dark cloud settling over me. I didn't need to turn around to know what it was. The shadow had come for me at last, and there was no escape, but then, something strange happened. Instead of the icy grip of fear tightening around my heart, a sense of calm washed over me. It was as if the darkness had finally accepted me, had drawn me into its fold. The whispers returned, softer now, more soothing, as if they were trying to tell me something, something important, and then I realized the truth, a truth so horrifying that it nearly shattered what little sanity I had left, the shadow wasn't just a manifestation of my guilt, my fear, or even my desire for revenge. It was me. It had always been me, from the moment I set up those cameras, from the moment I edited that film, I had been feeding the darkness inside me, nurturing it, allowing it to grow. The shadow had become a reflection of everything I had tried to hide, my anger, my bitterness, my hatred. And now, it had consumed me completely that I was the one who had been stalking Jessica, terrorizing her, driving her to the brink of madness. I was the one who had planted that handprint on the wall, who had whispered those terrible things into her ear as she slept. The shadow was nothing more than a projection of my own twisted psyche, a manifestation of the monster I had become but that wasn't the worst of it, the truth hit me like a sledgehammer, knocking the breath from my lungs, leaving me gasping for air. Jessica wasn't just gone, she was dead. And I had killed her, the memories came flooding back, fragments of that night piecing together in my mind like a gruesome puzzle. I had been in her room, standing over her as she slept, my mind clouded by the whispers, by the shadow's insidious influence. She had woken up, terrified, and I. I had snapped. I didn't know how it had happened, couldn't remember the exact moment when I lost control, but the result was the same that I had murdered my wife and now, the shadow was all that was left of me, a hollow shell of a man consumed by his own darkness. I could feel it tightening its grip, pulling me deeper into the abyss, where there would be no escape, no redemption. I had set this nightmare in motion, and now I was trapped in it, a prisoner of my own making. As I sat there in the darkness, the whispers growing louder, more insistent, I knew there was only one way out. One way to stop the madness, to silence the voices once and for all that I stood up slowly, my movement sluggish, as if the shadow was already dragging me down. I walked to the kitchen, my steps echoing in the silent house, the shadows trailing behind me like a dark cloak. I found the largest knife in the drawer, its blade gleaming in the faint light, and gripped it tightly in my hand, the whispers didn't protest. They had been waiting for this moment, guiding me towards it all along. And now, it was time, with one final, shuddering breath, I pressed the blade to my throat, the cold metal biting into my skin. The darkness wrapped around me, welcoming me into its embrace, and for the first time in what felt like an eternity, I felt at peace. As the blade sliced through flesh and bone, the world went dark, the whispers fading into nothingness. The shadow consumed me completely, and in that final moment, 
I knew I had become what I had always feared, the monster in the dark.